to be able to complete in-class assignment number four, and to be able to test groups of variables when you're running your regression for your project, you need to know how to conduct a joint hypothesis test. This is going to allow you to test for the effects of a group of variables on the regression model. The F-test is a formal hypothesis test designed to deal with a null hypothesis that contains multiple hypotheses at once, or a single hypothesis about a group of coefficients. The way the F-test works is fairly ingenious. Translate the null hypothesis into constraints that will be placed on the equation, estimated the constrained regression equation using OLS, and compare the fit of the constrained equation with the unconstrained equation. To actually conduct the test, we generate something called an F-statistic. We've used the F-statistic before to test the overall significance of a regression model. Now we will use that same F statistic calculated slightly differently to test whether a group of variables is collectively statistically significant or not. The F statistic is calculated by running two separate regressions and recording several variables and then making the calculation you see on your screen. We will run the unconstrained regression and we'll record the residual sum of squares from that unconstrained regression. That regression will include all the x variables we think should be in the model. Then we'll run the regression again, leaving out those variables we want to test to see if they matter on the model. The second model will be called the constrained equation, and from that we will also record the residual sum of squares. We've given this the name of the residual sum of squares m for that constrained equation. m is going to be the number of constraints. In other words, the number of x variables we're choosing to leave out of the model. n minus k minus 1 will be our degrees of freedom from the unconstrained equation. In other words, the regression model we started with. K, of course, we know is the number of x variables. N is the number of data points that we have. The decision rule for this test requires us to compare that F statistic we just calculated on the previous slide with a critical value from F that we'll calculate using F.INV.RT in Excel or we'll draw off the F table. The decision rule functions just like every other decision rule we have. If your F score is outside of your F critical value, you will reject the null. Otherwise, you will fail to reject the null. In other words, if the F statistic is not out beyond the F critical, we will not reject the null hypothesis when we cannot accept the alternative. The F statistic will have two types of degrees of freedom. There'll be a degrees of freedom for the numerator, M, and the degrees of freedom for the denominator, N minus K minus 1. These will be used in the calculation of the F statistic and also the F critical value in Excel. We're going to use an example from the textbook looking at pharmaceutical prices across countries. P is the pharmaceutical price level in the country divided by the United States, the GDP compared to the United States, the consumption of pharmaceuticals compared to the United States, and then several dummy variables here. We've got a dummy variable for patents, we've got a dummy variable for strict price controls, and we've got a dummy variable for price competition. We want to see if these differences in policies across countries impact the relative prices of the pharmaceuticals across countries. In other words, do those regulations that different countries have impact the difference in the price levels of pharmaceuticals in those countries compared to the United States? We're going to use this partial F test to determine if those country dummies should be included in the equation or not. We'll start with the null and alternative hypotheses. The null hypothesis will be that the full and constrained models are not statistically different. In other words, the country dummies don't matter. The full model will have the country dummies in it. The constrained model will not have the country dummies in it. If we reject the null, we're able to say the full and constrained models are statistically different from each other. In other words, the country dummies do matter. So in Minitab, we'll go to Stat, Regression, Regression, Fit Regression Model in order to run our regression. 
The dialog box will come up, we'll enter in price for our responses, and we'll calculate our model using the variables of interest. So we've calculated a regression with the GDP and the consumption as X's. This would be how much income really are they making, how much do they demand the product, and then those three dummy variables that include those regulations of interest. From this model, we're actually going to record two things. We're going to record the adjusted sum of squares for the error. In other words, the residual sum of squares from the original model. And we also want to look at our number of x variables included in this initial model. That will be k when we go to calculate our degrees of freedom. So we'll go back and we'll run the model again, but now we're going to run that constrained model. So we're going to take out the three dummy variables that include that regulation information across countries. We want to be able to see if those regulations actually matter. Delete those three out and then hit OK again. And we'll get this new regression model. Again, in the analysis of variance block, we're going to take the adjusted sum of squares from the error section. This is our residual sum of squares sub m that we need for our model. We know we left out three constraints, so m equals three. We should have all the things now we need to calculate the f statistic. We'll calculate the f statistic as follows. We've got the residual sum of squares from that constrained model, which was our second model, that was 11,077, minus the residual sum of squares from the original model, that was the 7,066.9. Close that off and divide by three. Three is our number of variables that we leave out of the constrained model. Divide that by the original residual sum of squares, divide by 32, which was our sample size, minus five, the original number of variables included in the first equation, minus one. So if we do the math here, we end up with an F statistic of 4.9179. Then we need to calculate the F critical. The F critical is going to give us the cutoff in the tail that tells us how far away we need to be in order to reject the null hypothesis. Let's assume a 5% level of significance. So in Excel, we would do equals f.inv.rt, left parenthesis, our probability is 0 0.05, our numerator degrees of freedom is 3, because that's our number of constraints left out of the model, and our denominator degrees of freedom is n minus k minus 1, just like we used in our F statistic calculation above. When we hit enter in Excel, we get 2.975. So we need to be at least 2.975 for our F value. We're beyond that at 4.9179. Remember that the F distribution looks like this, where this is zero and our cutoff, our critical value, is going to be somewhere out here in the right tail. Our 5% probability is here. Our value happens to be further out than that critical value required. We're out here at 4.9179. So we are far enough away in order to reject the null hypothesis. We are able to say then that the country dummy variables with regard to that regulational differences have a significant impact on the model or really on the price of pharmaceuticals compared to the United States. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.